The popular longevity supplement sulforaphane has been studied many times and with mice it can extend lifespan between 10 and 25 percent. But on top of that it's even been shown to dramatically increase quality of life metrics like strength and endurance. Sounds great huh? But the difficulty is is getting it from your diet. So I'll cover that, the difference between diet and supplementation and go into my own dosing protocols once I've given an overview of sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is a naturally occurring compound found in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, kale and cauliflower. It's derived from glucoraphanin, which is converted to sulforaphane by the enzyme myrosinase, which is activated during uh, chewing. Let's go over some of the health benefits of sulforaphane. It activates the NERF2 pathway, and I talk about this a lot, as this upregulates uh, antioxidant enzymes like glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase, and these all steadily go down with age. Interestingly with mice, when they genetically engineer them to overexpress this NERF2 pathway, they can extend lifespan between 15 and 20%, so mimicking those effects of high-dose sulforaphane. As I alluded to before, health span is very important as well as lifespan, and in this particular study, they showed with uh, sulforaphane that they could increase the amount of time that mice could uh, support their own body weight holding on like by you know, grip strength. And this is by a dramatic number as they got older. These are at, uh, 22 months versus two month old mice. And even then there's a slight improvement at, with young mice with sulforaphane, but obviously the dramatic difference is when they're older. And this is uh, the same correlation shows with endurance as well. This is measured in work. So the amount of time the mice are able to uh, run on a treadmill. And so that's the amount of carrying the amount of body weight that they can support. So obviously it varies mouse to mouse, but the uh, overall work was uh, that dramatically went up too. Sulforaphane is widely known to be a phase two detoxifier. So supporting that liver, uh, excreting them from the body, you know, becoming water soluble pollutants. And this is something we all suffer from in this modern world, whether it's from pollution in the air, water, food. This is a, an ongoing thing. And as you get older, these pollutants can build up in your body. It's been shown to inhibit the NF-kappa B pathway. So this is a key driver of chronic inflammation. And so reducing the production of inflammatory cytokines like uh, interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. So furofen can induce apoptosis in cancer cells by upregulating genes like uh, BAX, as well as anti-apoptotic genes like BCL2, which is you know, for like healthy cells. And this even crosses over into epigenetic modulation. It's also an HDAC inhibitor. So what that means is histone decitylase. It basically, uh, you know, as you uh, say, stress out cells. So if you're a smoker, then uh, those tumor suppressing genes, they get silenced as your histones tighten up and this can uh, decompress the histone so the, the gene is able to express again those tumor suppressing genes that you definitely weren't turned on. It also can turn on AMPK, so activating genes involved in energy metabolism. So upregulating uh, your uptake of glucose and lipids so it can improve both of those and following on with gene expression, it's been shown to influence the, the FOXO3 gene as well as CERT1 and CERT2. And these relate to things like uh, mitochondrial function and just overall longevity, you know, turning on uh, autophagy, as well as mimicking caloric restriction. And this is an ongoing thing on my channel. I try to minimize caloric restriction as much as possible because what's the point in living longer if you're miserable? If you're living in like up to like say 40% caloric deficit, almost no one can do that. You're gonna be very miserable. So it's trying to mimic a lot of these things through certain supplements and protocols to get the longevity benefits, but still being moderate with calories, you know, you're not gonna to go to a buffet and just uh, blow your brains out eating everything and do that regularly. It's about trying to find that balance where you enjoy food still, but you don't go too extreme either way. Something else interesting with sulforaphane, it induces a hormetic effect, so your body's stress response. So it can uh, induce uh, heat shock proteins, and this can minimize a protein misfolding, and it, this even crosses into the brain, you know, like a protein aggregation, which is a hallmark of Alzheimer's. And one final benefit I'd like to touch on is gut microbiota modulation. It's been shown to uh, upregulate genes involved in the junction barriers in you know, your mucosal membrane. And this can get, be broken down from, say, plant defense compounds like lectins. 
you might find them in say white potatoes in the in the skin and just various different nightshade families even in brown rice there's a lot of things and this can just break down over time and then that can cause inflammation and leaky gut and this just repairs that uh, mucosal membrane and tightening up those junctions so let's go into diet versus supplementation and why i've chosen to go down the supplement route well, from diet is quite hard to get. You can get it from broccoli sprouts if you're willing to grow them or buy them. It can be very expensive and time consuming. It is in obviously broccoli as well, uh, particularly in the, the heads of the broccoli, uh, the flowers rather than the stems is about twice as much in the flowers. But uh, yeah, compared to broccoli sprouts, the number is, is just way, way lower. And the other problem with eating broccoli is it's been shown it could be even up to a tenfold decrease in the amount of sulforaphane when you cook that. And I don't know about you, but eating raw broccoli is not very appealing. So while yes, I still endeavor to get as much sulforaphane as I can from food, I go for the tender stem broccolis. I think it's just a bit higher there. The stems aren't quite as uh, fibrous. And then also, uh, yeah, just try not to overcook it. So I get some kind of baseline level of it, but it's still, yeah, like I say, it's hard to get it from food. So I've been supplementing just 10 milligrams a day of it. And uh, yeah, this is something I'm gonna keep an eye on, say with certain biomarkers um, in, in relation to say my telomere length, that's quite an important one because sulforaphane has been shown to, it can even protect your DNA. So, uh, you know, protect those caps on the end of your chromosomes, your telomeres. And so, yeah, let's see over time, because this is a little bit of a weak area of mine at my telomere length. So at least if I'm just protecting it, then trying to minimize oxidative stress. Also, I've got biomarkers of chronic inflammation. My IL-6 has come down dramatically, but it's still got a long way to improve. My CRP, that's uh, going, that's actually going in the wrong direction. I'll, I'll be doing a retest of that. But yeah, just uh, those across the board, you know, can help with inflammation. I mentioned those uh, inflammatory cytokines. So you've got the other two as well, not IL-6. You've got IL-1 beta and TNF-alpha. So I'll be keen to see over time if my CRP can start going back in the right direction. So I've chosen to do just 10 milligrams a day and just do that long term and just see what happens. Obviously, I'm doing so many different things for antioxidants. And I think with uh, you know having a broad supplement regime, it might sound extreme, but when you keep the doses low, then you tend to get more of a benefit. To, it's diminishing returns. When you go higher with a the dose, then the, the returns are obviously less the higher you go. So it's about, in my case, I'd like to keep it broad and then that minimizes any risk of overloading yourself. But of course, some people prefer to keep it more simple, doing less supplements and maybe do a higher dose. So yeah, I think even up to 30 milligrams a day, that is safe. I mean, in mice models, uh, they've been even up, supplemented up to, I think close to like around 150 milligrams equivalent human dose daily. So yeah, there is not, uh, I wouldn't be too worried about, uh, you know, going up to 30 for sure. And the, the place I get it from is Vitality Pro and I'm really impressed with the quality of their products. This one in particular, they, they source it from another supplier and it actually comes chilled because uh, sulforaphane, as I mentioned earlier, it's um, vulnerable to heat. Even at room temperature, when it's stored, you know, pure sulforaphane, uh, it's been shown that it can, over 30 days, you can lose about 22% of it. It's not a great deal, but yeah, if you wanted maximum potency, especially if you're keeping it for a few months, then I would keep it in the fridge. But yeah, I'm really impressed with the quality of Vitality Pro products. They've even got independent testing across the board. If you like that, then check out this video here on my NAD boosting protocol, featuring a couple of supplements, apigenin and uh, luteolin, and th these help with the NAD salvage pathway, which becomes more dysfunctional as you age. Thanks for watching, see you next time.